Welcome back to the channel, Ramblers. My name is Amber from the Ramblin' Richardsons. As you can tell, I'm out in the garage again tonight. Um, I have been very sporadic posting and I apologize for that. And it has been crazy um, this uh, past couple of weeks here. We've had a lot of things to do. My niece went off to uh, Air Force Base in uh, Texas. She is going to be an officer in the Air Force. So we met up with her. I had my high school reunion. Uh, so I got to go to that. Um, and then I've been super busy with my day job. So all of that kind of compounded into not having a whole lot of content to post this week. But I wanted to come back strong with another video in the series of, so you want to learn how to cook. Uh, I don't remember if this is like four, five, maybe six. I don't remember. We're going to go over the top five cooking mediums today in today's video. Let's go ahead and kick it off with number five. So for number five, kind of added a lot of different things into this one category, animal fats. There are a number of different animal fats. You have lard, which comes from pigs, tallow, which comes from a beef, and you have schmaltz that comes from poultry, like duck, duck fat. So we're gonna just combine animal fat um, all in one category. Now this isn't butter. We're gonna get to butter. It's definitely on the list, but animal fats can be a great cooking medium. Just be careful because animal fats will have different smoke points. So when you're cooking with animal fats, you may have to adjust the way that you cook your food because the fat is going to be smoky at different temperatures. So I'm not gonna go into all of that, but just do your research, but they're a great way to cook food, especially if you are doing something like a Whole30 compliant, um, if you're doing Whole30 compliant month, or if you have paleo compliant meals, animal fat's gonna be a great cooking medium to cook your food in. Number four, and this is gonna come from just being down here in the South, shortening. Down here in the South, shortening, your grandparents and your parents probably use it, Crisco, the big old blue tub of that white stuff that they used to fry chicken in. That is hydrogenated vegetable oil. So it's made from vegetable oil, but it's hydrogenated, hydrogenated, you get what I'm saying. Anyways, uh, not one that I currently use in my household, but here in the South, it is a major cooking medium, especially if you're gonna be frying things. It's great for frying. Um, it's not necessarily the healthiest thing to cook your foods in. So if you're looking for some alternatives, we're gonna get to those next. Number three on the list of cooking mediums or cooking fats is going to be butter or ghee butter. And we're gonna put them together in one group. So butter, we're all familiar with. Ghee butter may be new to you. Ghee butter is used in a lot of Middle Eastern and Indian cooking, basically, Cow's milk is put at a very low temperature to allow the water to evaporate. And what you're left with essentially is ghee butter. Um, it's also Whole30 compliant. Um, and I can't taste the difference. It has a little bit of a different smell. If you're gonna be putting butter on toast, maybe don't use ghee butter. But if you're gonna be cooking something like chicken in a pan, hey, throw some ghee butter in there as your cooking fat so that you can cook it up. And it's also a nice, healthier, Whole30 or paleo compliant cooking fat. Number two on our cooking medium or cooking fats list is gonna be coconut oil. I love using coconut oil. It's a staple in my spice rack or in my spice cabinet. 
I usually have some of this always on hand. I really like to roast vegetables in coconut oil. My favorite is Brussels sprouts, roasted in some coconut oil. No seasoning, just coconut oil and Brussels sprouts. Put them in the oven, roast them. Coconut oil has a very high smoke point, so it's not going to get really smoky unless the temperature is super high. And those Brussels sprouts come out with almost like a nutty flavor. It's super good, um, but it's also a Whole30 compliant. I'm not sure if it's paleo, but definitely Whole30 compliant cooking liquid that you can cook your foods and vegetables and proteins and things like that. And I, I definitely use it all the time. And then number one on our list is gonna be EVOO. That's right, extra virgin olive oil. This is probably the one that most people are going to be familiar with. Extra virgin olive oil is gonna be in, I would say about 60 to 75% of any kind of recipe that you find online. They're probably going to say, cook it in extra virgin olive oil or olive oil of some sort. It's very available at the stores where you go. You may not be able to find some of these other things like ghee butter or tallow or schmaltz, for example, but extra virgin olive oil is widely available pretty much everywhere. Now, our bonus item for tonight, I've chosen avocado oil. Now, oh, there are a lot of other extra virgin olive oil alternatives like sunflower oil, rapeseed oil, avocado oil, a number of different kinds of oils that are out there that you can cook with. I like avocado oil. It really has a light flavor to it. It's not a very strong flavor. Uh, I like to usually get it in an aerosol can. Just be careful when you're looking at avocado oil if it's something that interests you. A lot of avocado oil is actually mixed with other oils. It's not 100% avocado oil. So just be a conscious consumer when you're out there looking for it. Now you're probably going, Amra, hello, sesame seed oil. You have an Asian family. Like sesame seed oil is not on this list. And you're right. And I'm going to tell you why sesame seed oil is not on the list of liquids to or fats to cook in sesame seed oil is typically if you're if we're talking about asian cooking from authentic asian cooking right not the recipe you found online from who knows who i'm talking about real authentic asian cooking most asian cooking is going to be done in peanut oil because it's super cheap so if you're going to get something like chicken fried rice, it's mostly going to be cooked in peanut oil. If sesame seed oil is used, it's typically at the end as a finishing oil to provide a little bit of flavor. Sesame seed oil has a very strong flavor or it's gonna be used to make things like vinaigrettes or some kind of sauce. It's not gonna be used to actually cook your proteins or your vegetables in. So if a recipe calls for you to cook something in sesame seed oil, my recommendation personally is to sub out something like extra virgin olive oil for the cooking portion, and then to, at the very end, lightly drizzle whatever it is with a little bit of sesame seed oil to give it that little punch of sesame flavor, sesame seed oil flavor. So also a good FYI, if you're planning on going and doing any traveling to any countries that can be considered Middle Eastern or Asian, and you have a peanut allergy, make sure you ask what they're cooking in. But there's so much more out there. I encourage you to go ahead and take a look into it. But if you start with these five, you're gonna be set for pretty much any recipe that comes across your desk or comes across your phone or whatever that you wanna end up trying. You'll probably have the right cooking medium to get that recipe taken care of. That's all I got for now, guys. I wanna thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, life's about the journey, not the destination, and we will see you on our next video. Peace.